And what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Inland Sports Show. I hope you are ready for some outdoor sports. They could be right around the corner here in the Inland Empire with the new state public health guidelines. We're going to get to that in just a second, but we got a real big, juicy show for you tonight. A lot of high school sports coming your way. Santiago girls soccer, Citrus Valley football, Murrieta Mesa girls lacrosse, um, and all of that hinging again on the newest COVID case rate numbers. And Johnny, let's go to that graphic right now so people understand what we're looking at. So in San Bernardino County, we're currently at 15.2. In Riverside County, 16.6. And again, that metric that we have to meet is 14 cases for 100,000. And that number for San Bernardino and Riverside dropping very, very, very quickly. So my best guess is by next week, by next Tuesday, that's the day when the newest numbers come out, we will be at 14 or below. But again, for high school sports, it's all going to come down still to the uh, school district or the private school. Even though the governor says, here's the metric, meet the metric, then you can play, the school district or the private school still has to make it happen. So we'll see what happens come next week. We could have football. We could have water polo. Uh, we could even have soccer right around the corner. Their matches will be starting shortly. So that's the latest on the high school sports numbers for the outdoor sports. Um, so we'll definitely keep you posted. And again, we'll be talking a lot more throughout the show. But leading things off right now, now, we're going pro on the show right now with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes broadcaster Mike Linskog. And Mike, that's dude, that's a pretty sweet, I don't know if it's a studio, it's a, if it's a closet. I don't know where you're at right now, but it's pretty cool with those Quakes jerseys. Yes, well, I, I try hard to uh, to shine for you. There you go. He's got uh, he's he's got me all over the map there. So I'm I'm trying to uh, to wiggle in here and, uh, and and make it as as professional as I can. I, <laughs> you know, the the biggest thing with our season coming right around the corner is I got to figure out what to do with my haircut. I mean, it uh, it hasn't been uh, properly trimmed in months and months. I see you're not suffering from that problem. No, actually, if you want, so I've got the best barber in town because I cut my own hair in the garage. With no mirror, huh. I just I just go huh. for it. So if you want to invite, I me had over, no idea that Flobies still uh, <laughs> still were around. That's cool. I will wear a mask and I will Floby you up, <laughs> whatever that means. Hey Mike, so let's talk about the upcoming season for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. I know last year was so hard because we didn't have minor league baseball at all. We are all you know so very anxious to see the Quakes back on the field at Lomar Field. How excited are you to actually call some games again? Oh my gosh. I mean, beyond excited. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a great lead off to, to your show here tonight. You, you look like not necessarily a sports guy, but you look like almost a weatherman given, <laughs> given these stats and predictions uh, of numbers. And that's really exciting for high school sports. Uh, and, and we, we certainly are keeping our fingers crossed that, that they can all get their respective seasons uh, going in the right direction. Fortunately for us, uh, for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, uh, we've had some, uh, some exciting news uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, just about, Two weeks ago, um, we signed a 10-year partnership with the Los Angeles Dodgers. It's going to keep us a Dodgers affiliate, obviously, for the next 10 seasons, which is, is just awesome. Uh, at the end of this 10-year agreement here, uh, that will have marked 20 years of affiliation uh, with the Los Angeles Dodgers consecutively as, as we're now entering our, our 10th season already with them. Uh, so, yeah, 20 years with the Dodgers. And then just last week, in fact, Major League Baseball uh, put all the, the, the dots on the eyes and crossed the those tees and we were able to uh to reveal our upcoming 2021 schedule and and for our fans that have been waiting around uh for for some california league baseball uh we've finally got some good news to share which is obviously uh enough to make everybody smile around here that cares about sports well mike i don't know if you have this answer yet but when we look at the 2021 schedule will there be fans at some point maybe when the season starts there won't be but you can add them later in the year is it gonna you know you love the numbers uh, I was just going over some of the numbers at least for outdoor youth and high school sports but you know for fans and attendance where we stand on that right now well, there's obviously, you know, a lot of excitement with the anticipation of the season, but but as you're alluding to, there are still a lot of questions that, that remain unanswered. And, and for us, you know, within the state of California and locally within San Bernardino County, um, obviously those questions are uh, are still pretty pretty hot and heavy. We're uh, we're excited to, to get one by one answered here as uh, as the weeks go on. Uh, our anticipation is that uh, our home opener on May 11th uh, will have some fans, which is exciting. Uh, 
that's that's the the gear that we're steering for, and uh, and that's the direction we're headed. Is that fans will be allowed into the ballpark? But of course, uh, ultimately, we're going to need uh, California state approval for that. So, um, you know, our home opener scheduled for May 11th. What we're what we're saying is we expect fans to be in the ballpark, but obviously that that decision ultimately is out of our control. Uh, so it's what we're hoping for. Um, if by some chance we go backwards within our community, COVID wise, um, and we we don't receive that proper clearance, uh, then our California league season will, will not begin as far as, uh, as far as what I'm told, meaning, uh, if there are zero fans allowed at the ballpark, the quakes and, uh, the 66ers, uh, and the Lake Elsinore storm, uh, et cetera, et cetera, will not be playing their season until fans are allowed in the ballpark. So again, um, a lot of excitement with the schedule release, uh, but obviously, uh, some questions to be answered, uh, for uh, the state of California, for our local community, as far as when fans can get in the ballpark but we're we're uh, anxiously awaiting and, and keeping our fingers crossed so mike looking at the schedule i know COVID has forced us all to do things differently and i, I was looking at the california league schedule and correct me if i'm wrong but so like the home stands will be a little bit longer like the schedule is just kind of set up a little bit differently right this upcoming year yeah, it'll look a lot different. In fact, for, for 2021, there's definitely been some changes that, that fans just in looking at the schedule will recognize. And again, most of this is COVID related. So what they're going to see is all Mondays are off. Like the, the Quakes will not be playing any Monday games this year. And that means that uh, since all, as you just alluded to, all series are going to be six games, um, they're going to start on Tuesdays and they'll end on Sundays. And so, you know, like our opening series, for instance, is May 4th. We're going to be on the road in San Bernardino. Uh, we'll have six straight days there, take Monday off. We'll come home to Lone Mart Field on Tuesday. We'll host the Modesto Nuts for six days. We'll have Monday off. We'll hit the road again, et cetera, et cetera. So there won't be an all-star break this year because it is going to be a bit of a shortened season. Normally, um, we'd be playing about 132 games is, uh, is the new format for minor league baseball. This year, however, because of COVID, because of all these restrictions, we're going to try to do 120 games. So it'll be six 60 home games, 60 road games. Uh, again, the schedule this year is starting a little bit later than it normally would. We're going to kick off that first week of May, uh, whereas typically we would kick off the first week of April. We're going to run a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to get into into mid-September, and uh, and normally we would finish up that first couple of days. Uh, Memorial Day weekend is, is typically when we when we finish up. Well, Mike, let's just assume we're going to have a season on time. We're going to have fans in attendance. You got special promotions and stuff to kind of bring the fans and re-engage with them at Lone Mart Field. Well, no doubt. We, we can't wait to see those fans. Uh, promotionally speaking, we're, we're still putting the pieces together. We're working hard, um, again, with capacity restrictions. You know, we don't know, uh, you know, who's going to be allowed in the ballpark as far as how many fans. Um, you know, our capacity is uh, is 5,000 on a, on a normal day. And so if it's, for instance, 25%, which is kind of what we're anticipating to start our season, uh, that's roughly about 1,250 fans uh, that would be eligible to, to come in the ballpark. So we got we to gotta do our best to, to make it special. Special for, for everybody that's coming. Um, and again, you know, it's our anticipation that, uh, you know, the COVID restrictions aren't going to look like uh, May when, when we get to September. So I think uh, it's probably wise to, to piece together the promotional schedule in small chunks. Um, and so that uh, potentially when, you know, August, September comes and uh, the air is clear, if you will, figuratively uh, speaking, that uh, that perhaps the, the promotional schedule uh, will, will take an even greater leap forward. Well, Mike, I can't wait to see the Quakes on the field. I can't wait to see you with a new haircut. There's so many things I'm looking forward to with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes this season. <laughs> So. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's uh, it's been a long time to have lost an entire baseball season yeah. to uh, to a global pandemic. Just seems unfathomable. I mean, it's it's just unthinkable. And and now we're we're finally, you know, with the Dodger news two weeks ago, with the schedule coming out last week. There's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. There's a lot of reasons to get excited. Uh, we we haven't been able to open our offices still, so we're we're entering our 12th month of, uh, of of no no quakes office hours. So I'm still. You know, my, my day job currently is a first grade uh, teacher. And uh, and now I moonlight uh, on the Inland Sports Show. Mike, you are the best, man. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to find you out there at Lone Mart Field because I'm. I, it looks very promising. Those COVID numbers are dropping very, very quickly. So it looks very promising for that California League season coming up. Mike, always appreciate the time, brother. We'll talk to you soon. 
I'll be the one. I'll be the one with the mask and the headset, <laughs> not just the mask, but the headset too. That that'll be me. That guy. That guy. Thanks, Mike Pat. Scoggy Scog. Mike Lynn Scog from the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes join us here on the Inland Sports Show. Mike, always appreciate it. Again, yeah, the schedule's coming out uh, starting early May in the California League, and uh, hopefully they will be off and running. Now, uh, we're also going to bring on Coach Kurt Bruick from Citrus Valley. Coach, I, I can see you out there if you can turn on your camera and your microphone. In fact, I think he's at practice right now. Um, Coach, you hear the best. So, listen, we're going live to Citrus Valley football practice. I know these guys are getting after it. Coach, were you pretty excited when you saw the, the newest uh, COVID case rate numbers come out on Tuesday? Because we're getting close uh, to 14. Ec ecstatic, ecstatic. You know, and I think as of today, I think they were under 14. So, um, with that being said, we got to wait till next Tuesday. But um, we're planning on uh, delivering equipment, get equipment to the boys and, you know, making this a full yeah. practice. So, so, like you said, on Tuesday, when we get the official numbers, do you think you'll be out there in helmets and pads on Tuesday? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. So, we got to get our date. We got to get our 14 days in, you know, and, and our 10 days if, if we can find a scrimmage. And so, we're excited and ready to do it. So, Coach, how does this affect your schedule? Do you have to kind of rebuild a new schedule? Do you play some of the same opponents? Is it just league games? How's that going to look? Uh, so, right now, it's, uh, it's five league games. So, we go Rev, uh, at Ukaipa, Redlands, at Beaumont, and Cajon is what we're looking at right now. So, Coach, what's it been like just to, you know, I know you guys have been going hard at it for a long, long time with the conditioning and the workouts and getting closer to real football practices. And what has it meant for you guys and your team and your players just to be together as a group and, and going through the, the motions of, you know, of a, a football practice? Well, I think it saved our kids, you know, I mean, a lot of kids don't want to go to school if they don't have something to look forward to. A lot of a lot of grown-up teachers don't want to go to school if they don't have something to look forward to, you know, as well. So, um, with that being said, the, the we've been our district has been fortunate to let us out here since um, October, and we've been going four days a week, you know, two days and two days, but really four days a week. We lift, you know, a couple days. We're on the field a couple days, and um, we've we've our numbers have stayed strong. You know, we're up over 120-ish. So um, we're, we're feeling pretty good about getting started and getting going. And, and I think we've prepared, you know, we're a veteran staff, we're old guys and we've prepared <laughs> our kids for next week. I mean, next week we're putting in, we're, we're, we're doing all situational type stuff, you know, that, that is really, you know, all about football, you know, football smarts. So um, we're going to teach them all that next week because they've learned enough as it is, you know, the last thing we've got to do is safely teach them how to use equipment and uh, we're off and running. You know, Coach, that was going to be my next question was, you know, do you think a football practice with helmets and pads or a real football game this spring is going to look different from years past because of safety protocols? Um, I hope not. You know, I mean, I hope when it's all said and done and we get on the fields on Friday nights um, that everything looks the same. I mean, one thing, obviously, we're going to spread out more on the sidelines. You know, we're going to um, we're going to be wearing masks, you know, whenever we can. We're going to be doing all the stuff we can to help. You know, we have to get tested once a week. I mean, that kind of stuff is different. But as far as letting kids be kids, you know, and, and play football, I, I hope I hope we don't have a, diff a different thing going on. You know, I hope that we've prepared them enough that um, that it's all the same. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. I'm going to let you get back to work, man. But we are looking forward to next Tuesday because I think you're right. Those numbers are going to be below 14, and you guys will get it cracking. <laughs> I appreciate it, Pep. I almost got killed right now, so I, I barely they barely missed me on the slant route. So I can't, I can't. I'm standing out here in the middle of the field like an idiot. But, I, I, yeah, I appreciate you uh, having me on, and, <laughs> and uh, hopefully this all goes like we wanted to. We can't control 14 Tuesday, but we can control everything else, so let's get it going. Yes, sir. Listen, I can't live with that guilt if you got hit, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you, Coach Brewer. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Pep, appreciate you. <laughs> yes, sir. That's <laughs> Citrus Valley head football coach, Kurt Brook. Listen, I don't, with football right around the corner now, I don't want to be the reason why Citrus Valley doesn't have their head coach on the sidelines for that first game. But yeah, as you heard, if Tuesday, if we hit 14 or less, they will be in helmets and pads on Tuesday, and they will start their first, uh, it's that 10-day cycle of helmets and pads practices, maybe a scrimmage, and then right into that first game of the year in Citrus Belt League play. When we come back here on the Inland Sports Show, we'll talk some girls soccer with the defending Division I champions, Santiago Girls Soccer, joining us next on your favorite show, The Inland Sports Show. What's going on, guys? This is Ray Bass from hey, Performance Training. You're watching The Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. Hey guys, it's Pep Fernandez from the number one sports show in the Inland Empire, the Inland Sports Show. 
I wanted to let you know about the BASS School. That stands for the Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes. All of us are trying to find a way to get ahead in the classroom and in athletics. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Wanting to give your son the best opportunity to succeed. BASS is an all-boys private middle school servicing 7th and 8th grade student athletes. They've got unique, customized curriculum for student athletes, individualized nutrition and athletic development, plus rigorous academic development with small class sizes. This is not an online homeschool. This is a private school for students who are serious about their grades and serious about their sports. Bass School enrollment for the 2021-2022 school year begins in January, so don't wait. Lock up your spot today. Visit BoostTrainingSystems.com for more information. The number one sporting goods store in the Inland Empire is Ken Sporting Goods in Norco. Whether you need new uniforms for the entire team, a letterman's jacket, or new cleats for the upcoming season, check out Ken Sporting Goods. Plus, now you can order masks with your favorite team, school, business, and more. Order for your entire team or organization. Visit KenSportingGoods.com for more information and for the latest on the big sales. Make sure to follow Ken Sporting Goods on Instagram and Twitter. So if you need team uniforms or sports gear, there's only one place to go in the Inland Empire. That's Ken Sporting Goods. What's going on, Pat? Guys, I'm going to hit you with a really cool shout out right out of the gate. So, when you talk about Division One college men's basketball, Gonzaga has the number one, the longest winning streak in the country right now. They've won 26 straight games. That's Gonzaga on the men's side. On the women's side, as of this morning, as you're hearing this, California Baptist University has won 23 straight. That is now the longest in all of Division One college women's basketball. So Gonzaga for the men, CBU for the women how cool is that congratulations to both of them and it's just so unusual that those little schools can be so powerful in the entire nation yeah, it's unbelievable. CBU's come so far in such a, a short amount of time. And a quick shout out to our guy, Taiwan Walker from Ukaipa High School, got picked up by the New York Mets. Two years, $20 million. Not too bad for the former Ukaipa T Bird. Gosh, as they say, man, teach your kids to be pitchers, right? <laughs> That's good money Jeez. right there. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show. Yes, you can check out KCAL Rocks 96.7 FM every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. talking some sports. Right now we're talking some Santiago girls soccer because it looks very promising of having a high school soccer season right around the corner. And they are the defending Division I champions. Uh, join us here on the show. We're going to start with head coach Mike Fleming. And coach, I always appreciate you making time to pop on the show and talk with us. And I wanted to get you guys on because, you know, we saw the latest COVID case rate numbers and, and we're getting very, very close to, you know, allowing outdoor sports here uh, in Riverside County. How excited are you on the, the prospects of having a full on high school soccer season? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of surreal to, the, to think about it because, you know, we've pretty much been uh, sitting around waiting and expecting and anticipating for this moment. Now it's here and, you know, we, we, we meet weekly, uh, three times a week on our Zoom sessions. And I've been telling the girls that, um, you know, it, it, it seems like a whole lot of nothing right now. But uh, when we get the green light, it's going to be it's going to be a, a breakneck speed. We're going to hit the ground running and it's going to seem like where'd the time go and as if we were never off to begin with. So it's exciting. So um, I know the girls uh, sharing that. So I'm just happy for them to be able to get back out and play the game they love. Coach, I'm kind of with you. Like, I was always anticipating this day. I always wanted to see this day where we'd return to high school sports. But 
you know, we were just stagnant for so long. I was like, man, is this day ever going to come? But we're finally here on the cusp of it. Um, you also have some of your players here uh, joining us on the show as well. I'm going to jump to each of them as well. I'll start. I'm just going to go around my Zoom screen over here. I'm going to go with Autumn Tompkins first. And Autumn, I know you're one of the seniors here on the Shark Squad. Um, how excited are you about getting the season going when it looked like for so long that there was just so many question marks? We didn't know if we were going to have a season. What do you think, Autumn? Um, I'm super excited. I'm so ready to play, especially after all this time and there just being nothing going on. I'm so ready to just have life kind of be normal again for sports and to see my teammates and everything again. Yeah, you know, Autumn, you know, in terms of just being around your teammates and that camaraderie of, of being on a team, you know, obviously you play to win the game. You guys you go out there to win CIF championships, but just sometimes just being around your teammates, right? And just having fun, yeah. and, you know, like being around the team on a daily basis, like that's valuable too, right? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Now let's go to Peyton Harmon. She's also joining us as I make my way around the Zoom screen. If you got, yeah, Johnny, go ahead and punch that up. Johnny Nunez, our director in the back. And, and Peyton, as we get ready to start the season, I know you're another senior, right, on this team. And I'm so happy for the seniors because, again, for so long we thought, are these seniors going to get a chance to play this year? Like, we just didn't know. And here we are. We're very, very close to making that happen. Um, what are your thoughts now as we get closer to the actual start of the season? Um, I'm definitely really excited, you know, leaving off on winning a CIF championship was awesome, but we didn't really get to celebrate or like have a real banquet due to the pandemic. So I'm happy that we get to, you know, gather again and hopefully celebrate and win another one. Go back to back, right? <laughs> All right, we also have Sienna Irwin joining us here on the Inland Sports Show. And Sienna, just to kind of piggyback off what Peyton said, you guys were so good last year winning that Division I championship. I believe it was against Upland. You guys correct me if I'm wrong um, in that Division I championship match. But Sienna, as you come back as a senior, and Peyton just hinted at it, trying to win back-to-back -back CIF titles, how special would that be to the program? Yeah, well, um, I've grown up in the Santiago soccer program. Um, my mom's been a coach and it was always my dream to win division one. I. I only got my freshman year. I was out with injury sophomore year, so that, that sucked. But um, then I came back junior year and it was kind of surreal. Um, I've grown up next to Fleming at all the games. I was a ball shagger. And it was, it was really hard to think that my senior year was gonna be taken from me. Um, I almost couldn't believe it. I was like, I've waited for this my senior night. Um, just even not having a banquet last year was really hard because we worked really hard for that season. Um, and we got the result we wanted. So getting the chance to do it again, um, when I got the text from my club coach actually saying that we could play both and that it was probably going to happen, I texted Fleming right away and I was like, this is awesome. Like, we finally get to do it again. So I'm really excited at the chance. I've grown up with Autumn and Peyton as well. I went to middle school with Peyton. Um, I've known Mr. and Mrs. Tompkins for a long time as well. So getting to defend your school is there's no better feeling in my opinion. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, come, again, coming off a championship, getting a chance to do it again. Um, and, and coach, I wanted to ask you again, because you've got some special seniors on this squad. This, uh, I would say about this time last year, you guys were in that CIF championship run, right? What maybe this weekend would have been the, maybe the championship matches or right about now. So here we are 12 months later, a year later, coming off that championship season and you get a chance to start your year. I, I saw when the, that first CIF calendar came out that they had pushed soccer back to like a spring sport just for this year. And at first I was like, oh man, that kind of stinks. But in hindsight, it was good because it bought you more time to get a season in. Are, are you excited now that you're a spring sport? Yeah, I mean, well, I, I don't care what season they want to classify us as. Uh, <laughs> I'm just happy we can be anywhere so we can play um, and, and get back out there. You know, <clears throat> as alluded to, it was an anticlimactic type of ending to the year uh, to win a title. And then, uh, you know, literally within a week and a half, we're shut down and everybody sent home. And uh, we all, you know, it was it was 14 days to slow the curve. And now here we are. So, um 
you know, I just feel I feel like we're blessed to be able to get this. It, it seemed like um, a lot of things had to fall into place and go our way. Uh, when I say our way, I mean everybody, everybody, whether you're a football player, track, uh, whatever sport you're playing. You know, sports. Um, I, I'm not here giving this interview, sitting in this classroom right now, if I didn't have sports. So. For me personally, sports sports was a lifesaver in the sense that it, it, it kept me in school. It, it engaged me to be at school, uh, to get the grades I needed and to participate. And it gave me a connection to a community that, that you can't really describe. Uh, it's more than just wins and losses. It's it's about the camaraderie and the relationships, and you know it teaches you those, it teaches you those life lessons about responsibility and integrity, and just you know it, it's such an all encompassing thing. And for them to to have that robbed from them in, in the sense of uh, you know being sidelined, basically, um, it's it's like the longest prolonged injury that they didn't really give themselves is kind of what this has been. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I, th I think we're just blessed to be back out there. So, yeah, we're going to take advantage of it. We're going to try not to, we're going to minimize whatever complaints we have and just be grateful for, for the fact that we're out there kicking that ball again. Yeah, that's a victory in itself just to be out there uh, having a season this spring. Coach, let's just assume for the sake of this conversation that next Tuesday, uh, Riverside County is at 14 or below, and you guys get the green light to just you know, go loose and, and get the soccer season going. How quickly do you think you'll have your first matches? Like how, how far off? Well, I, I, you know, that all depends on the, 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 the issues. I mean, as I understand right now, we can't play across County lines unless uh, according to the guidance, the only way you can play, yes, you can play across County lines, but we have to be within our um, orange tier number wise to do that. Uh, regardless of whether we're at the 14 threshold or not. I was reading it today, actually. Uh, so out of county matches right now, it's going to be a problem. I, I was just talking to Pat Rossi the other day through text. Um, got a text from Jeff Gordon at Sunny Hill saying, hey, Los Alamitos is looking for matches. You want me to put you in touch? And I'm like, sure, let's do this. And um, Pat and I were talking about possibly getting something going on you know, the 30th of March. I already had a game lined up with Pacifica. Um, they made a great run last year for the 11th of March, you know, and, and the fact that these are out of county schools uh, means we might have to either try to push them back to maybe hopefully um, buy us some time. Um, but uh, ultimately, if, if all we can get in is our, our 10 league games and slide into a CIF thing, then, then great, let's bring it on. Um, we do have Vista Murrieta on the 23rd and we have Temecula Valley on the 25th, and I believe they're the only other two Division One schools with us in um, Riverside County, so we're going to put ourselves up against them and test them, and test ourselves to see where we're at. So, you know, we're we're going to give ourselves a good two two and a half weeks to train, and then we're going to jump right into it and get going. Yeah, there's some good programs across Riverside County that you guys could play, and luckily Orange County numbers are actually even better than Riverside counties in terms of COVID. So that's going to work in your favor, I guess, in terms of, you know, scheduling, like you said, going across the county line and, and maybe playing some of those Orange County schools. Um, I want to go back to some of your players real quick before we wrap this up here. Um, I'll go back to Sienna. Sienna is the one on the screen. And I know this, that she does not have her, her championship ring. Sienna, where is your Division One championship ring? I'd be walking all around, you know, Dos Lagos or wherever you guys hang out with my, with my big championship ring, uh, you know, representing. So, unfortunately, I got sized for like a size four, and then they told me they couldn't make it in anything smaller than a six. So, I tried to send it back to get it resized or to see if they could do something for me, and I just was on the phone with the lady today, and she told me um, the only thing I can really do is get like a something to wear under the ring so it'll fit snug. <laughs> yeah, so it's been it's been weird not having it because my sister got one. She was on the team last year, so she has hers and it fits her. But my fingers are just really small, I guess, and they don't make it that size. Just so. eat a couple cheeseburgers, a couple milkshakes, <laughs> and I bet you you'll be a six in, in like a week. You'll be good. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully not because we're going to have a season, but <laughs> That's true. Um, you, never, you never know. <laughs> Coach, I guess I could do that. Coach is like, do not listen to him. That was bad advice. Right. Do not do that. That <laughs> was know. awful. Uh, but I think Pey Peyton, I saw one of you guys had your ring or maybe Autumn did too. Who has your ring right now? 
See, okay, Autumn and uh, there it is, the wide shot right now. We see both of you. Peyton, do you wear yours quite a bit, like uh, around Corona, or is it something you just put on a shelf and admire when you're at home? Um, definitely at first I was wearing it everywhere and I was definitely showing it off, but <laughs> I don't know, it's really big. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to like do stuff like, right. So I try to keep it on my desk. <laughs> what this whole thing uh, getting in the way. Uh, and finally, Autumn, listen, you know, obviously that division one championship was special. And, you know, like coach was saying, and, and some of your teammates that you didn't really get to properly celebrate and enjoy that championship because that's when the pandemic really, you know, got serious here in Riverside County. Um, do you still think about that division one championship much or do you just focus in the, on the season ahead and maybe going back to back and winning a couple in a row? Um, I'm kind of think both ways. Um, I'll have photos and videos pop up of like us winning and I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, I can't believe that's already a year ago and how crazy that time was and how much work it was. Oh my gosh, we went through so many good teams and to get the opportunity to win, especially around people that I love and people I've been with for the past four years was amazing. But I'm definitely looking forward to the future and a and hopefully winning another CIF championship, get one of these again, you know, that'd be great. But yeah, I'm just, I'm very thankful to even have a ring because I know a lot of people who don't in their four years of high school. So yeah. Well, hopefully you guys go back to back. You get another ring, hopefully a ring that fits Sienna uh, this time. <laughs> uh, girls, congratulations. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. We're fired up about the soccer season coming up. And uh, again, it looks very, very promising. And uh, well, hopefully we'll catch you guys out there on the pitch out there at Santiago soon. Thank you for having us. We appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. That is head coach Mike Fleming, Sienna Irwin, Peyton Harmon, and Autumn Tompkins joining us here on the Inland Sports Show. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. And that segment was brought to you by our good friends at Boost Performance Training in Corona with the Bass School. You can check it out. It's a private school, not an online school. That's BoostTrainingSystems.com. When we come back, some girls lacrosse. Yes, lacrosse season is also right around the corner. We'll talk with Marietta Mesa head coach Molly Samakul when we come back. This is Alexander Madison. You're watching the Inland Sports Show. Inland Sports. Calling all athletes. Make sure you're at your very best by training at Boost Performance Training in Corona. Whether you're a football player, soccer player, baseball player, lacrosse, athletes from all sports and all levels train at Boost Performance Training. Led by former Centennial High School football star Ray Bass, you'll develop explosive power, become faster, and add that lean muscle. Don't be left behind and get a leg up on the competition at Boost Performance Training. Visit BoostTrainingSystems.com for information on their training programs and also on the Bass School. That's the Bass Alternative School for student athletes. Trying to earn a scholarship? Maybe make the varsity team. Get a spot in the starting lineup? Well, let Boost Performance Training help achieve your athletic goals. say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. I've been that way since 1976. That was my goal to reach out to local uh, sports programs and it's grown from there and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us and he's going to college right now. And, and uh, that's exactly what my son did uh, 20 some years ago and it keeps on going, you know.
customers that come in the store that it, it's amazing uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that that came in here when we first opened back in 76. Oh, we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now, and um, it's just been a, a blessing. We are the IE. We work hard. In fact, that's the way we like it. We wake up early. We stay up late to get the job done right. That blue collar, hardworking mentality is the same reason we have so many successful teams and coaches and athletes in the Inland Empire. We never give up. We are a resilient bunch in the IE. Everything we have, we've earned. No excuses. It's this determined attitude is what powers our small businesses and that's how championships are won the inland sports team is looking to team up with other like-minded small businesses in the ie together we can grow we can be bigger and better if it was easy everyone would do it but we're not looking for easy just looking for an opportunity joining the inland sports team could be the opportunity that you've been looking for Inland Sports Show, everybody. Big thanks to Santiago Girls Soccer, Citrus Valley head football coach Kurt Bruick for joining us on the show. Mike Linskog, the voice of the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. And last but certainly not least, because we're fired up about girls lacrosse as, as well. That's an outdoor sport, so it looks like it will happen very, very soon here in Riverside County. Head coach down at Murrieta Mesa, Molly Sovacool. And, and coach, when, you, when you're not rocking out to Dirks Bentley, you're coaching lacrosse, <laughs> right? I love Dirks yeah. Bentley, but uh, so I had to bring that up. But so when I was getting you on the show, you said, hey, I, I don't know if I'll be at practice or, or if I'll be at home. So where is the surprise location that you're doing this interview live right now? Uh, a mom who has two kids who's with a partner that do sports. Uh, I'm at home right now. So this is my backyard living the dream. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a beautiful backyard. Uh, I, it, it's perfect. Yeah. Perfect setting for a, a live interview here on the Inland Sports Show. But, Coach, I wanted to bring you on because, you know, lacrosse in general is a growing sport, especially here in Riverside County. More and more yeah. athletes are getting involved with this sport. Talk about just the, the, the growth of the program at Marietta Mesa because I feel like the Southwestern League or that part of the county uh, really is kind of like a hotbed. There's a lot of, you know, in Corona too, like there's, there's athletes who want to get involved and there's, they're, they're coming up um, through the high school ranks now because it's a, it's a CIF sport. Yeah, uh, it actually went CIF last, last year, which was big for girls lacrosse. Um, the Southwestern League kind of boomed about seven years ago. Great Oak was the first school to go. It was over 10 years ago that they started lacrosse. Temecula Valley joined suit. Chaparral probably eight years ago. And then uh, my principal, Steve Ellis, I was the head coach actually at Temecula Valley High School said, hey, we're starting lacrosse here at Marietta. So um, what are you thinking about coming back? Because I'm a teacher at Marietta Mesa. And he said, and starting the program here. And I said, what do you mean? You can't start it without me. And he <laughs> says, well, it started with or without you. So you make that decision. So I was coaching the Bears and I decided to make that leap over and kind of start over at Marietta Mesa. Um, it's huge. It's a, it's a hot sport right now. Athletes like it because it's kind of like a mutt of all the other sports combined. You can really relate any sport to girls across. Um, and that's what makes it easy to pick up. I think it's high scoring, it's energetic. So it's easy to fall in love with. And I've seen that a lot with the girls in the area with coaching the club and coaching multiple high schools. It's, it's, it's popular. Yeah. So, Coach, I'm not, you know, super familiar if there's like, I think there is club teams for lacrosse, and I think you actually do some yeah. club lacrosse as well. So do you get, yeah. do you get athletes at Marietta Mesa who, you know, play lacrosse on the side for a club team? Or are you maybe getting some, you know, girls who played soccer or basketball or maybe one of these other sports, and they're like, you know what, I've always had an interest in lacrosse. Now there's a team, I, I think I'll go try it. I mean, do you get, you know, beginners as well? 
I think it's kind of shifted over the last six years. That first year, I was just begging for athletes to fill two teams. Uh, we finished our tryouts today at Mesa, you know, just under 40 athletes. It's a little lower than the past four years. I think COVID had a little um, play in that. However, you know, girls are coming out, basketball players, girls are coming out, soccer players, tennis, we're getting water polo players. And then we're getting girls that are coming to Mesa because we have a lacrosse program that's well-established. Um, so it's a combination of both. And as a coach, you just love to see girls that are coachable um, and committed. So it's a variety. So coach, you know, lacrosse, obviously an outdoor sport, and, you know, with the new state public health guidelines, once we hit that 14 for 100,000, we, sh we should be good to go having a, a lacrosse season of, of, of some sort. Were you pretty fired up when you saw the numbers dropping so quickly? And, and, yeah. and you know, and, and again, looks very promising to have a season. Yeah, I have butterflies. You even asking about it. Um, I gave birth to my son on March 13th last year. So I was in a hospital room. Um, Tony, his dad, is the head softball coach at Mary de Mesa. He's at football practice right now. He's doing double duty right now. So thanks to him for being such a <laughs> strong partner. But we were in the hospital room and they said, you know, the tournament's off next weekend, this weekend. And we were kind of thrown off. They said, COVID, we're going to stop sports now for two weeks. And it was about one or two days later that we kind of got word it's probably going to be the whole season. So since then, we've been really working to keep our students committed, keep them healthy, keep them, you know, in a good place of, to communicate with us. So I have a lacrosse PE class. I'm really blessed with that. I appreciate it. And I've been able to connect with my students throughout the year and I've been telling them, keep the faith. We're going to do whatever it takes. If it's mass, if it's temperature checks, we're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. You know, my juniors last year lost that whole season and their seniors this year, they're not getting much, you know, so I've been praying about it and I've been thinking about it. And as when the numbers are dropping, my heart, you know, increases its pound a little bit, but I mean, we're excited and we're ready, which is good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Coach. You, so you have two small children, you coach, mm, yeah. <laughs> your husband coaches. You guys aren't busy then, right? I mean, you must have a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah, we love Mesa. We love Mesa. We love our athletes. I think that was one of the hardest things is, you know, the social distance, the stay at home orders. That was really difficult. We've, we've made a lot of memories in this house with our athletes, with our students. Um, so we're looking to get back. I mean, it's been exhausting even this last two weeks, just kind of getting back in the full swing of things. But we wished for it and it's here. So we're really excited. All right, Coach, finally, um, I know that, again, the lacrosse team at Marietta Mesa is like a family, and, and, and so much so that some of your players actually watch your kids. Um, yeah. So I don't know how we want to do this. If, if your house is very clean, you could take your phone and walk right inside, or you can maybe have the players come out because we'd love to see them real quick. I mean, this is live. Yeah. We're live right now, so why not? Hey guys, just want to give a little to Pep Fernandez. When do you want to say hi, Mama? Say what's up, Pep. That's a good oh, hey, talk. These are two of my dedicated seniors. It's a good group right here. Coach, what are their names? Let's give them a shout out. This is Brooklyn right here, and this is Cindy Moreno, Brooklyn Bonafide. They're pretty, um, pretty well known in the Mirada Mesa community over here. They've dedicated four years to our Beast class, which is our um, advanced student support. It's our student section class. So those, those kids have spent a lot of time on campus. I'll tell you that. They're good kids. So they're good kids. It sounds like they're great lacrosse players. I'll, I'll, yeah. end, I'll end with this. Better lacrosse players or babysitters? <laughs> Winnie, I know, I know I'm really tough. I'm tough to handle. The kids get a little intimidated, but man, my daughter Winifred, she's a she's a handful. <laughs> Coach Sovacool, I really appreciate the time. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, best of luck this season. You know, it looks like you guys will be out there competing in, in real matches very, very soon in girls lacrosse. So that's exciting. Yeah. We, I appreciate it. I just want to give a shout out to my Ohio family. They're watching. Um, so go Buckeyes. And then to uh, other, Casey, the state champion at, um, in golf two years ago, looking to possibly do it again this year. So shout out to him and my brother, Sean. He's the head football coach at LCC. So they're watching. They're supportive. And my brother, Michael, always says, grow the game. So we're working at it. You're, I think you maybe did a, a little bit growing that game right here tonight on the Inland Sports yeah. Show. So doesn't happen without family. So shout out to my parents as well. Coach, I appreciate it. Best of luck. And uh, let's, let's stay, stay in touch you. for sure. All right.
All right, that's Coach Silva Cool from Murray at Mesa High School here on the Inland Sports Show. We got one more break when we come back. A quick update on California Baptist basketball because the men and women are doing really, really well right now. We'll be right back. Six seven K Cal Rocks. What's up? It's Patrick and Forty. Hey man, you're watching the Inland Sports Show right here. Make sure you check out Pep Man. It's Inland Sports with Pep, but he's on every Monday and Thursday morning with Sports with Pep Man. You guys rock! The number one sporting goods store in the Inland Empire is Ken Sporting Goods in Norco. Whether you need new uniforms for the entire team, a letterman's jacket or new cleats for the upcoming season, check out Ken Sporting Goods. Plus, now you can order masks with your favorite team, school, business, and more. Order for your entire team or organization. Visit KenSportingGoods.com for more information and for the latest on the big sales. Make sure to follow Ken Sporting Goods on Instagram and Twitter. So if you need team uniforms or sports gear, there's only one place to go in the Inland Empire. That's Ken Sporting Goods. Hey guys, it's Pep Fernandez from the number one sports show in the Inland Empire, the Inland Sports Show. I wanted to let you know about the Bass School. That stands for the Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes. All of us are trying to find a way to get ahead in the classroom and in athletics. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Wanting to give your son the best opportunity to succeed. Bass is an all-boys private middle school servicing 7th and 8th grade student athletes. They've got unique, customized curriculum for student athletes, individualized nutrition and athletic development, plus rigorous academic development with small class sizes. This is not an online homeschool. This is a private school for students who are serious about their grades and serious about their sports. Bass school enrollment for the 2021-2022 school year begins in January, so don't wait. Lock up your spot today. Visit BoostTrainingSystems.com for more information. Lancers on the power play. Woo up top to Oleda. Left all alone. She'll try the three. Yes, it is. It's a three-pointer. 60-49 to 49 on the Oleda triple. She's up to 21. And that was CBU women's basketball. They are 20 and 0 on the season. They are the regular season Western Athletic Conference champions and their 23 game win streak is the longest in Division I women's basketball right now. In fact, Princeton University was on a 22 game win streak, but they uh, decided not to play this season. So right now, CBU with the longest winning streak in the nation, Division I women's basketball so that's big time uh, CBU uh, having a weekend off and then they will wrap up conference play against Seattle before going to the conference tournament but it's almost a lock I wouldn't say 100% because I don't know for sure but like I'd say like 99% sure that they will be in the WNIT assuming the tournament does have one um, so they are that good so keep an eye on them 23 straight wins in your Western Athletic Conference regular season champions and the men's team they will take on actually Vanguard University this Saturday. So a non-conference game before they wrap up at home against Seattle University the following weekend. And then again, just like the women's team, they will head to Las Vegas for the conference tournament. Well, this segment's been brought to you by Ken's Sporting Goods since 1976, bringing you all of your sporting gear. They've got letterman's jackets. They've got uniforms. They've got all kinds of masks. It looks like we'll be wearing masks for a little bit longer. So whatever you might need, let Ken's Sporting Goods hook it up. That's kinsportinggoods.com online, so you can check out the website as well. And they're a great follow on the gram. I know you do the, do the gram out there on Instagram, so check them out on there as well. Big shout out to our director, Johnny Nunez. He's got help back there. He's got Brock. He's got the Ant-Man. We got all the superheroes working on the Inland Sports Show tonight. It's fantastic. My name is Pep Fernandez. We will see you again next Wednesday night, 6.05 first pitch. And who knows, by next Wednesday night, I think
think a lot of schools and counties will have that green light that outdoor sports are starting. That's very, very exciting. Be safe. God bless you. We'll see you next Wednesday for your favorite show, The Inland Sports Show.